we developed wall type crater back in 2010 with StrokeSoft's programming team. And um, the first thing we've done is before we actually started programming this thing, we wanted to get the information back from the architects and contractors that are actually going to start using this or, or planning to use this. So we went and traveled with these guys and, and talked to these guys for a while. So we went to Texas market area, we went to California market area, talked to the main architects and contractors in that area. And um, this is back in 2010, so Revit was still getting fresh to the contractor side of things. Our techs were getting involved with it. Uh, so we're trying to get the details out of our tech, what they need from the manufacturing side of it, and uh, see how we can actually help them out to do wall types and also do families and all that kind of stuff too. So we received a lot of feedback from that, and the feedback we received was one is it's so complex to get information for wall types, uh, basically because there's so many different information to find. There's a, a wall information for a UL information for fire. Uh, they would basically go through the sometimes the Gypsum Associations handbook and try to find old stuff to try to match in, or from manufacturing's information if they had that. Um, same thing for STC, which is a sound rating system. So STC was always hard to find out unless the manufacturer's done testing on it. They could also go back to the old uh, manual and then see some old testing back in the 70s uh, to, to try to find and, and place these two together. And at the same time, they also have to figure out the limiting heights on this too. So they were having a hard time taking these three systems and putting them all together into one system in one library. Uh, the other problem they were having is they are always making wall type libraries, which uh, wall type li libraries basically is somebody, and you can see them on a screen, that basically somebody's just creating a bunch of wall types. And here this is just one wall type, a 3 and 5 eighths wall stud that is multiple times because you have different spacings, you have different thicknesses of stud, uh, you have different layers of board, so there's 36 just sitting here. Um, once you start changing everything, you could easily come up to 10,000 different wall types. So for somebody to try to create a wall type library uh, is very complex and very hard to keep up to date. So um, we definitely wanted to create something that was you know, user interactive that was actually done on the fly. So that's basically what uh, wall type creator is all about. Uh, wall type creator can actually be downloaded here on the website. Uh, it is now pushed into the Autodesk Revit Exchange Store. So Autodesk has actually gone through our app. They've gone through the programming. They've checked it. They approved it and then actually put it on their site. So when you actually download it, you'll actually download it from Autodesk Revit's Exchange site itself. Uh, so you can read a little bit more about it on the website here. Um, when you install the system, it'll actually install into, right now we have it, it automatically installs in 2013, 14, and 15 automatically. So it doesn't matter if you only have one or two, it's going to automatically load them in all. Uh, eventually, 2016, this is coming out, so we're putting some add-ons onto that, so that'll come out soon too. Um, but once you install it, it'll automatically be in your system. It'll be underneath your add-on tab here. And when you click on it, basically what this is, uh, I'll show you the other way. And basically, I'll show you the, the, the original out-of-the-box Revit. When you look at a wall type out of Revit itself, you can see that the, what the architects were having problems with was basically the wall type itself is in there, but when you go to the properties, the megadata we call it, the type properties, uh, you see that there's barely anything in there. There's information that needs to be plugged in, so the architect would have to fill this information in here. So this is a typical uh, out-of-the-box Revit wall type. Uh, that actually the architects have to go through, use that wall type, build it, put it in their library, they can save it in their library for later on to use, uh, pull it back out, try to find it, and, and there's a very hard way of uh, searching for it, but there is a way of searching for it. But you have to pull that back out of your library, put it back in your project. So uh, keeping the maintaining that system at the same time is very complex. So we wanted to stay away from this. We don't want to stay away from libraries like family types. We didn't want to stay away from the little piecemeals of everything. So we didn't want to have 10,000 different different families for you to pull in. So uh, what we've done is actually made our system in interactive. So when you start this add-on, what you'll see is actually on the left side here is actually a user interface filtered system. And you can see right here now it's at 420 wall systems right now. So the filter is actually brought down that many. Um, we're filtered down by, right now, by different types of design. I'll walk you through that. And we're also filtered by different spacing. So if I took those filters off, I'll easily I have over 
10,000 different wall types because we are right now we're stayed at um, 5 PSF for ladder loads and disinfection set. So once we turn those off, that filter would be over 10,000 wall types. Um, so right now we're going to filter this down and try to find the system that actually works for what we're looking for a project. So I'll walk you through these real fast. You get filters for design, which composite and non-composite is very complex, but once you understand how to use it, uh, there's a design help button to show you exactly what these mean. But composite basically means we're using the sheathing and the stud as a design element, and we're getting a fuller element, a fuller level than height, uh, because we're using those two design elements. Um, it's got to be a different, it's got to be a certain type of sheathing, and it's got to be screwed correctly. Um, to get this limited height, but as long as you have a composite wall and a full height wall, you can usually use this wall type limited heights. Uh, if the sheathing's half inch or it's going to the ceiling, not all the way up to the roof system itself, then you would definitely use non composite. And if you had an unsheathed, maybe one side only, uh, you would use bracing at 40 inches on center, and the sheathing on the outside would, wouldn't help do anything to our limited heights. So you'd use the non-composite limited heights on this one. So in this case, we're going to do a composite wall. Design filters, typically interior wall is 5 PSF, but we have the option to bump that up if you need to. Deflections for interior wall, typically L over 120 or 240. We'll keep it at 240. We have the options here to actually scroll up to uh, what we're looking for. So I'm going to say we're looking for a wall height of 12 feet. So it's going to actually filter me down. You can see the filter on the bottom here is filtering down. Um, we've got all our wall heights, our widths right now, so right now we're going to filter down to our standard 3 and 5 eighths for interior. Uh, again, this is all for interior wall systems. Um, then we're going to go do thickness. We're going to leave that down to, uh, we'll leave it at the Pro 25, 515 mil. And you can see right now we're down to 15 wall types. And let's say we want to have a 2 hour rating. You can actually scroll through all those, and let's say we want a, a STC, a sound rating of 40 STC. I want to hit somewhere in that ballpark. And you can see right now I'm down to two wall systems. So if I scroll down here, you'll see that's 358. It's a standard pro stud system, 15 mil. It's the spacing at 24 inches on center. We've got the design information here. The limited height is 13 foot 7, so I'm well above that, third, that 12 foot mark we're trying to hit. And the information that it's gathering for you is actually saying, okay, it's two layers on each side. That's hits, that gets my two-hour rating. Um, it's actually going through our database automatically. On, um, that's actually pulling out all the ULs that actually could meet. Uh, in this case, we have two options. We have an option with uh, putting insulation in it, which is going to give me a 54 STC, or we have an option that actually has insulation and also a resilient channel system and that will bump you up to a 62. Um, this system you see right here is actually an online database system. So if you were actually online and you didn't have Revit and you wanted to see something similar to that, you could go to our website too and actually go to our Clark Teacher iTools and then here you have design tools also. This system is exactly the same system that's online here. So if you went into our calculator systems, this is the same filter user interface system that you'll see online um, and also on Revit. So these systems are exactly the same. They're using the same database. So in case you're on the field and you want to see something mobile wise, this works on the mobile system. And it also works on your desktop. So if you want to check something first before you start drawing it and get into Revit. So this system works on two platforms, desktop and also inside Revit and mobile, I guess you want to say. So I'll close that. So basically, you're seeing the same thing that you saw on that little iTools app. Uh, it's built into Revit now. It's working interactively where if we added more testing in this system, which we have over 100 tests for the system, uh, if we add more tests to this library, it'll actually update automatically without you guys having to update your system. So it's interactive updates through online database, basically. So in this case, there's two systems that we're seeing we're filtered down to. We've got STC of 54 and STC of 62. To understand what STC is, it's kind of complex. So we had our, our sound testing library actually demonstrate the difference of these two. So if you want to play with that, this is on the app too. 
Um, you can actually demonstrate the two differences of the sound. So you hear a small little buzzing there. And you do the same thing with a 62. This is just a demonstration. It actually shows you a difference of these two references of STC of the difference of quietness. So 62 definitely can be a little bit bit quieter. Again, this is just a rough, rough estimate, but I asked the sound lab to actually compare the testings that all the testings they've done and then compare the, the, the ohms or the octaves of those sounds. So you can check that out too. Same time, you click the 54. It has the test, a link to it, a test for every test we've done. So um, that's one thing that's in this database is all our libraries of testing that we've done. And only way to create this library is to do all the testing. So we've got about 50 to 60 different tests for sound. Uh, same thing for uh, UL at the same time. So this whole system itself is compiling all those databases together and putting them into the system itself. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to collect. I'm going to click on the uh, resilient channel system. We'll click on that, and basically it's going to ask you which UL do you want because there's multiple UL. So I'll click on one UL. That'll push the information to the right, which is actually your user interface for your description. Um, this was very hard to do. We didn't know how to actually describe the wall type. Uh, we didn't want to keep it very generic, um, but it's up to the user now. The user could change it the way he wants to, but right now I've, we've gone ahead and, and put everything into it because you could change one little thing like thickness of the stud and it changes everything in the whole system. It changes the, the sound rating, it changes the UL. So that one little change could change anything in the system. So if you change the thickness, you, UL might not match. So we wanted to make sure you had all the descriptions down. You could come back later on and change your wall type name and, 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 the, and the later on. But for right now, we've put every detail into the wall description itself so you can find the reference again and use that again at the same time. And you also have the same thing as making a type mark if you wanted to put your type mark in there at the same time. So that's all the user information you could change there on top. On the bottom, you have two options. Um, the first time we were starting to do this, we were pushing it right into a template. So basically, uh, when you start this, it would actually create into a project template. So the wall type wouldn't go into your project. It would go into a wall type template. You could check it there, cut and paste it, then pop it into your project. Um, but we also have the option now, you can actually put it right into your project itself. Um, but if you wanted to check before you did that, you could use the template. But if you're ready to go ahead and rock and roll, you can actually put it in your wall and into your project. You can clip it up, keep it on your default, and then go ahead and build wall type. Basically what that's going to do is build it in the background inside your project and build the wall type in your project. So you get the message about uh, it's built in there. So if we go back to the architectural walls now, you'll see this list here will actually include our wall type. <clears throat> so that wall type is built into here. All that megadata that we filtered through would automatically go into the system itself. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that wall. We'll go ahead and lay out some walls here. And I'm going to zoom into this wall, and you'll see the detail now that's in here. So right now we've got sheathing that's outside. We had two layers on that. You see the resilient channel. You see a wall type that actually has insulation. The yellow demonstrates insulation. If I click on one of these walls and want to see that megadata, I can actually edit that wall type. And in this system now, versus what you saw from out-of-the-box Revit, everything's now filled in from the filters of the user, from our database and from the user selections. All those filters went into the megadata of this wall type property. So now in here, you can actually see there's manufacturing information. There's information about the wall types. You've got the two-hour rating information. You have the STC information here. You have the linked sound testings, the linked UL uh, testings at the same time. <clears throat> at the same time, we have design information that's in there. So the design information actually is linked in here. So if the architect hands it off to the contractor, the contractor understands exactly how the architect was planning to design this wall with this limited height, with the uh, 5 PSF lateral load, and my maximum height of this wall would be 13 foot 7. At the same time, let me go back into that again. At the same time, we have information about the lead information, which is brought in from our submittal system. 
and also we have information about our manufacturing information, technical information about our product itself. The SMIDL information is actually linked up here. So if you actually wanted to see a data sheet or a SMIDL of the product that you have selected, uh, that SMIDL link is actually right here. So if you click on that, you will actually get a product SMIDL of this system. So the SMIDL itself is actually section properties and limited heights on the second page of the system you just selected. So this is actually coming from our website into our SMIDL Pro system and actually tying everything together with the database. So we're passing the information from our tech to the contractor. And what we like to do then, and as what we've done with the MWF is, Strucksoft has the ability to take that megadata and actually push it into our framing system. So I'm going to pass this off to Matthew now with Strucksoft. And he's going to demonstrate basically how the basics of MWF and how the custom tools that we have for framing for Clark Dietrich now. We've been using these custom tools in-house, but uh, now we're actually uh, allowing the users of MWF now to uh, use these tools at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this off to um, Matthew. But if you need information about this product or system, go to clarkdietrich.com forward slash BIM. 